let's use that. That's fine. So where are we today in terms of uh, our blockchain ecosystem? We're in a world with like thousands of blockchains already, public chains, private chains, catering to different use cases. In the public chain world, we have smart contracting platforms like Ethereum, anonymity coins like Zcash, Monero. In the private chain world, we have chains that are catering to interbank settlement, to stock exchanges. So my question for you is, what if we could connect those chains in a more um, natural way. Like today, if you want to transact between chains, you would have to go the old way of transacting across exchanges, sending your Bitcoin to an exchange like Mt. Gox, Bitfinex. You see the problems already. It takes time, it's slow. It's not really native to a blockchain where you expect speed, um, safety, trustlessness. So what we were asking ourselves, what if we connect those two blo those blockchains and that's what we did with Comet. It's a protocol that does exactly that. It allows us to do instant transactions across blockchains. So how do we do that? We use three simple, block, three simple building blocks. And I think for everyone, if you're technical or not, should be familiar. The first one is the concept of a multi-sig. If you've ever opened a corporate bank account, uh, shared checking accounts where multiple signatures are required, that's exactly this concept. The second one is the concept of a time lock. If you have set up a trust fund that your kid gets access to when he turns 18, that's this concept. And the last one is the concept of a password, in this case implemented with a simple hash function. So if we find a blockchain that has those three building blocks in its smart contracting language, and we found even very simple blockchains like Bitcoin have those smart contracting capabilities of multi-sig, time locking, and a hash function, then what we found next is that more than 90% have those building blocks that allow us to build the Comet protocol. And I want to go a bit more in detail in how that works. So we use two different concepts. First, the concept of a cross-chain circuit when we go across chains, also known as a hash time lock contract. And I want to go through it real quick how that works. Even for those that are not technical, it shouldn't be too hard to understand. It uses only one thing, it uses a hash lock. You can, you can think about that as a, as a password lock, where we have now two different chains. We have transactions going from a user to a liquidity provider to a business. Traditionally, you would have an exchange in the middle or somebody that does a translation between multiple asset classes here. But with Comet, we can do this trustless and instant. So if we have a business on the Ethereum chain wanting, wanting to be paid in a sing dollar token, and we have a user wanting to pay in Bitcoin, then what you can do is you can lock up the funds, sending them to a liquidity provider under a hash lock. So it actually starts here. Business creates a hash of a secret, gives it to the user as an invoice. User pays the liquidity provider locking up the funds under that hash, which neither the liquidity provider or nor the user can actually resolve. And here, from that point on, the liquidity provider knows that he can only get paid if he actually forwards the promised payment. Like, he would already have arranged beforehand what is the rate that he would, would do this transaction. And by doing the same transaction, by copying the hash, you have linked those two transactions. Because you need the pre-image of the hash to fulfill either transaction, which means once the business sees the transaction coming in, it would most likely accept it and has therefore has to reveal the password, has to reveal the pre-image. This is the first concept which we use for linking multiple blockchains. And you might point out that this is quite slow because you have to wait for the settlement onto the Bitcoin blockchain to prevent double spends. And then you have to wait uh, for settlement onto the Ethereum blockchain that the business actually can guarantee it gets paid. And therefore, we use a second concept. It's called a payment channel to speed the whole thing up. A payment channel uses nothing else than a multi-signature address. Who in here is familiar with state channels and payment channels? OK, I think I want to explain that then. Um, multi-signature is similar to a shared checking account, so I will explain it in the world of finance instead. When you open a bank account um, where you have two signatories, they give you a checkbook. And every check only becomes valid when you have both of those signatures on it. So what you can do is now you can go with your friend, to, assuming you want to do multiple transactions with him, open that account. But before you put money in, you already signed the checks getting the money back out. 
So each of you holding, let's say, a check over $1,000, once you have cross-signed those, you know you can get your money out by just cashing in the check so you can safely put in the money. On the blockchain, the same is true. You can have a multi-signature account um, where you already have signed the transactions to get the money out before you put the money in. And here comes the trick. Once you have settled the transaction for putting money into the multi-signature account, you can update the transactions, who owns how much. The equivalent on the checkbook example is that we just tear apart the checks and write each other new ones. Because now we can do transactions that we don't have to wait for the blockchain to settle anymore. The same is true with the checks. The bank doesn't know who, who owns how much because they have no insight over the checks until you cash them in and basically close that account. Same is true here. We can do transactions between each other at the speed of the network between us simply by updating those two transactions. So if we put those two together, we have linkability between blockchains and we have the speed of real time, which is just the network between the nodes. And you can form a network. So if you're on the same network, then that concept exists. Maybe somebody is familiar with the Lightning Network or the Raiden Network, which are implementations of these concepts for a single chain. What we're building with Commit is using the same building blocks to go across chains, solving the problem of trading, payments, across any number of blockchain networks while retaining the real-time capabilities. So you can easily, like here, uh, imagine a multi-hop transaction, which still works, by using the same principles of having a hash, therefore linking all of those transactions together that either all of them are fulfilled or none of them. And because it's real time, you don't have to lock it up for long, meaning you could do a transaction saying, okay, I want to get this payment through in one second. If some of those nodes block it, you just try again different route. I think I already have to finish up. So I just want to finish up with the last words of, imagine where you can go if you have hyper-liquidity between different asset classes. Where would that go? Thinking about gold, thinking about real estate, but maybe many more assets that people are putting on the blockchain become liquid and usable. Thank you very much.